All right, I wanted to pick a location or help you learn how to pick a location to take your rabbit pictures. Um, I am holding the camera right now, so I'm sorry for the little bit of wobbliness, um, but I'm gonna have to move around here in a minute to show you what I mean. So lighting is going to be the first thing that you need to watch. If you're in indirect light, you're gonna be able to have a lot more control over the image and edit it and make it look better. But if you move to a place like this, where it's a very bright and direct, it's gonna be very harsh. And so you're not gonna have nearly the control over the image if you're in a situation like this. So the trouble being right now, it's fall. Like the leaves are gone pretty much. So if you're outside, it gets to be a little bit harder. Now, I'm gonna set this, <laughs> there's the dogs. I'm gonna set this down so I can chat for just a hot minute. All right, so the other thing that I wanted to bring up when I can sit my hands, or talk with my hands and sit the camera down was um, a lot of you have barns to take your pictures in. The problem being with that is there is like hardly any light in them to begin with, and then you have a lot of harsher light. Um, and so that makes your images just look bad. Um, <laughs> I'm just not gonna mince words with it. So, and we have trucks off this direction, so I can't really do a whole lot about that. But um, just with having the harsher images and the lighting, you're not gonna be able to fix a whole lot of that. So that's why you need to either one, take your rabbits outside, choose a background that is pretty minimal. The trouble with something like this is that when people who want or care about the confirmation of the rabbit, it's a lot harder to see. And you really want the focus to be on your animals, not what's in the back. You don't want to necessarily have pretty stuff and cluttering, I don't wanna say cluttering, but the idea is people are trying to make the images pretty which is fine, but it, it takes the focus away from the animal. So I'm going to show you some images of what I do personally when I'm trying to get some pictures. Um, and I also want to encourage you to start taking them in batches. So before the leaves go down, and this is le le what's left of some brush, but our trees are basically completely gone. So you're going to lose that shadow um, to be able to stand underneath them to take the pictures and not have this harsh direct. You can kind of see on my hand here, the light is getting, it's patchy and even on my face a little bit. Um, the light is, is very inconsistent. And so batching them before you get into the bad weather times is a good idea. Um, if you have a very well lit room, then that can also work. But I discourage you, if your rabbits are not indoors or something along those lines, be true to the, to the way you raise them. Don't I try not to go taking super fancy pictures because like that's not the way I raise them and I'm not going to, um, you know, they're not in my house and stuff so I'm not going to give an illusion of something that's not true, okay? Alright, so let's flip this around now and I will show you some more things to think about when you're looking at what's behind your animals. Alright, so this is the, I'm sitting you on the trunk that I like to sit my rabbits on to take the pictures. But this is the background that I typically have to work with. So, you see our lovely road in the back there. <laughs> um, but then literally right center past the trees is a pole that has our power lines on it. But also, if I turn you a little bit this way, we have our propane tank. <laughs> so, and that is something that you want to really consider. Does it matter that those things are in the background? No, but it's something that gives your images a lot better of an appearance. If you can, one, I'm gonna point here, have your animal block that or have it angled enough to where you are going to be able to crop it. So that is the key is to also know that editing fixes a lot of mistakes, okay? So the other thing I want to point out here with the harsh lighting is that, do you see how the the sun is in full blast at the moment and it makes all the leaves and everything else look white versus the, you know, like vibrant browns and yellows and, and such that they are? Um, that is something that you are, it's going to be very difficult to fix. 
So that's why if you notice a good um, unsunny <laughs> or overcast day, then you're gonna be able to fix that. All right, and then some other things I want you to think about before you go to take your pictures um, are things like, who's the image for? So I've talked about this in some other videos, but you have to know who you're selling your rabbits to. And so if you're selling them to someone who likes to show them, who, um, and, that, and that's the only type of person you're trying to, to reach, then you need to have your images of the headshots, like so the way that the rabbit looks in the head, the way that they pose. Um, if a rabbit is supposed to be like a runner, um, checker giants are one, so the, the judge will have them run across the table and kind of watch their movements. Ch consider trying to get a video of them doing that. You have to know who it's for so you know what kind of picture to take. If you are also trying to target people who would want a pet, um, who may, yes, they want a good looking animal, but they kind of care more about the cuteness, um, you need to have um, a little bit more of a, a looser image of the just the rabbit kind of sitting there looking cute. Now, I've said this before, and I, I want you to consider not, well, not consider, but I don't want you <laughs> to um, make images that just don't, aren't you, or are not your personality. So I, my rabbits are not inside, and so I do I think they're pets, and do I love having them? Yes, but they're not the same as my dogs. They, um, and I'm not gonna go get a ton of stuff to just take unrealistic images. I'm not gonna set a rabbit on my couch. I'm not going to um, put clothes on them or something like that. If that's not my personality in the way that I want people to feel when they interact with me, I'm not gonna take images that portray that. Okay, does that make sense? So here's an example of an image that I did just to play around with some of the babies. This is fine, but do you see how it's still outside? The rabbit is just kind of sitting on the picnic table with the pumpkins. It's not like a fantastic image as far as like location and things like that, but it's still me just kind of having fun, okay? So you can do things like that to where if I had brought that inside, put it on, I don't know, a piece of furniture or something to kind of make it look even more um, homey, I guess would be the idea. That's not me. Could I do that? Yeah, but it's going to portray me and bring in different people that I might want to attract, okay? So that's just one thing that you really need to know and understand when you're taking those images. If you were like me and you're kind of doing both on your social media, you can do post a little bit of both, but more lean towards the cute side. But then you can also on your website have good post pictures of your breeding animals or um, when you are trying to do the sales, different things like that, okay? That is the key things that I want you to, to really think about when you um, are going to go take your pictures. The other thing that I'm gonna turn this camera around is show you some things like grid lines and the way that you can crop them to make them appear a little bit more just visually appealing, okay? Now, there are a lot of different things you could do, but see these grid lines that pop up? You want that image or the core focus of the um, image to cross one of those, those lines. Now, this is okay right here where it's kind of crossing the middle of both of them, but having the object of the image intersect one of them makes the image a little bit more visually appealing. Okay. Now, sometimes just how the image is taken, you're not going to have, you know, it perfect. Um, but something like that would be the ideal um, image <laughs> ratio for what is possible here. Um, personally, I'm going to crop it down just a little bit more because I want you to be able to focus mainly on the rabbit when I show you how I'm going to edit it. Um, my, I'm lining it up in the center because I want the rabbit to be on the one third in the middle of that. Now, the other thing I want you to see is when you have something like that fence in the background, if it, if the image was like this, that seeing that is just going to, you know, mess up the eye. It's just going to confuse. So while the rabbit looks fine being aligned like that, when you go to readjust it, try and get the, the core objects that are um, like a line, whether it's vertical or horizontal, 
get those straight because that's going to help make the image more visually appealing. Okay. 